It's time for Baby and Toddler Instructions with host Blythe Lippman. Blythe is a nationally renowned infant and toddler expert who has over 30 years experience helping moms and dads regain their sanity, teaching them how to survive, and giving them the confidence they need to be the best parents ever. From sleeping, to crying, to potty training, to choosing a preschool, and so much more. If you're a parent, Baby and Toddler Instructions is the show you've been looking for. Now, here's your host, Life Lippman. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever in the world you may be. Thanks so much for tuning in to Baby and Toddler Instructions. Today is Wednesday, August 26, 2015, and it's a live show today. And guess what? It's also National Dog Day. Yay! So if you have a dog, make sure you give your little dog a special treat, an extra treat, take him for another walk, unless you live in Arizona where it's 100 degrees. Anyway, so happy National Dog Day. I'm such a dog person. But remember, if you are listening to a podcast, you can always download them all from toginet.com, iTunes, Stitcher.com, and, of course, my website, MyBestParentingAdvice.com. You can download them 24-7. You can't call in during the show and ask a question if it's a podcast, but you can always contact me via my website, MyBestParentingAdvice.com. And also, all my guest information is always on the site and will stay there. So I am really excited about my guest this morning, who will be with us in just a bit. Dr. Howard Ferran, dentist and MBA, is going to be talking all about your children's dental health. And I can't wait to ask him the question that's been coming to my email all week, so stay tuned. But first, recalls. There really weren't any new recalls this week, so that's great news. However, make sure you visit my recall page on mybestparentingadvice.com, or you can always go to the cpsc.gov. You know, I say it all the time. If you get one of the wonderful hand-me-downs, and it's great because things are very expensive if you have a baby or toddler, make sure you check the recall list and do not try to fix it yourself. You know, the companies will take whatever it is back. They'll either send you something new, they'll send you a part, or they'll send you money. Anyway, so don't ever try to fix anything yourself. It's Even though it may look easy, you know, it just needs a little s screw here or a bolt here, just don't do it. Contact the company. I always put their website and I always put their phone number, so none this week. But there were a f about four of them last week, so check it out. Um, I do remember one was from Ikea. It was a nightlight, and it could cause a shock. So if you have a nightlight in your child's room and they're a toddler and they can – if, if you know, of course, if they're a toddler, they're walking. Make sure the night light is up high. Don't let them touch it. We're supposed to cover all the sockets anyway. But these are really pretty. They're in all different colors, and they've all been recalled because they cause a shock. So, enough about that. Let's see what else I have today. Oh, this was really something interesting. Here in Gilbert, Arizona, a mom left her baby strapped in the grocery cart in a hundred degrees. Somebody found the baby outside the, well, I guess it wasn't the grocery store. It says the Gilbert Salon on Monday afternoon. And the mom said she forgot him. She had three children with her while shopping. Oh, she was at a shopping center. The boy was not even a year old. He was strapped into his carrier. Well, that's a good thing. But he was sitting in the back of the grocery cart outside. outside. And they waited outside for a few minutes thinking the mom would come right back. And then they called the police. The baby, thank goodness, never got overheated, didn't cry, and the police came, and officers, they didn't arrest her. She just said, she just said, oh, so good, he's so good, he's so cute, which is a little crazy, and they said the baby was fine, and the mom just made a mistake. Well, my gosh, that's a terrible mistake. I don't know what you charge somebody with. You know, moms are busy, and she has four children, but how do you forget your baby? Anyway, on that note, I want to just tell you about this tip because this isn't the first time this has happened. And we know, unfortunately, some babies have died because parents have left them in the car in the sweltering heat. And, you know, the car heats up in three seconds. When you, If you have a baby, and again, let me preface this by saying no parent ever, ever, ever wants to forget their child in the car. However, mistakes have been made and you're rushing to work, you're rushing for an air, whatever it is. And you know what? 
sometimes people forget and there's no excuse. Get in the car. After you put your baby in the car seat, your toddler in the booster, take off your left shoe and put it in the back with your baby. When you get to your destination, I can guarantee you, you are not going to go very far with one shoe on. So take your shoe off. You will never forget your baby. You know we can forget computers. We can, convet, we can forget purses. But you will never forget your baby if you only have one shoe on. So just a tip for me. Anyway, I don't know. Hopefully I'm, this, will, this mom will never forget her baby again. Also, there was an interesting article in the New York Times a while ago, and maybe Dr. Ferran can enlighten us on this. I couldn't find the up-to-date um, information on this, but it just really caught my eye. Preschools add brush and spit to their day. And Massachusetts, they either passed a law or they tried to pass a law that makes sure that these little ones brush their teeth when they're in preschool says the 12 four-year-old sat in the corner, small hands clasping toothbrushes, which Isaac and Aaron brandished as swords, stabbing each other in the side. Jackie rubbed his toothbrush into the carpet. Abigail squirmed, and the other child jumped up and down. You ready? Start brushing, said the teacher. Well, you know what? The brushes have been in, on the floor. They've been inside. They can't be clean. And then they swallow the pea-sized dots of bubblegum-flavored Dora the Explorer toothpaste. So Massachusetts try to pass a law so that the t- so that the kids get have good oral health. Now you know I can't find the info. If somebody has it and you want to call in during the show, eight seven seven eight six four four eight six nine, or maybe Dr. Ferran can tell us. But I looked at this, and if you listen to me, you know I always give my opinion. I'm very honest, and you don't have to agree. I think dental health is so, so important, but I have worked in many preschools, and I have to tell you, it's one more thing that the parent has to worry about, and I can't imagine that it is really so cleanly to have toothbrushes at school, especially if they're three- and four-year-olds, and they have their art projects and their glue, and if they're two, they wear diapers, and, you know, I don't know if this is such a hot idea. Anyway, I did want to share that. And while we're talking about toddlers and preschool, I just wanted to share a couple tips from my book, Help! My Toddler Came Without Instructions, from my chapter called Toddlers Gone Wild. And I've shared this with teachers a lot, and you probably heard me say this, but I'm going to say it again. If your toddler is having a meltdown, don't try to reason with them. Don't sit down and say, let me tell you why you should stop screaming, and let me tell you why you should stop kicking. Get down to their level and whisper in their ear. And this works wonders most of the time because they just stop. If You know, tantrums, toddlers have tantrums because they need something. They're tired. They're hungry. They can't use their words yet. They're cutting a molar. Um, They didn't have a good night's sleep. They need something from you, but you don't know what that is when they're screaming at the top of their lungs. So try whispering in their ear. Also, if you... Tell your toddler to do something, and she keeps asking you why. After three explanations, why, 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 ask her to tell you why and see what your toddler says. It's really fun when you ask your toddler why you think that he or she has to do something. And when your toddler is reluctant to choose, you give a couple choices. You know what? Make sure They can count to five, and you say, I'm going to give you two choices. Toddlers love to be independent. And pick out the clothes the night before. Only give them two choices, the red shirt, the blue shirt, the pink skirt, the green skirt. Two choices only, and if they won't choose and you're going to be late, just say, you know what, I'm going to give you two, two more choices. Of course, you should be doing this the night before. Not too many choices with toddlers. Anyway, so Toddlers Gone Wild, I have a lot more tips in this chapter as well as my other books, Help My Baby Came Without Instructions and Help My Toddler Came Without Instructions and more Help My Baby Came Without Instructions. So on that note, did you ever hear that singing happy birthday twice while you brush your teeth will keep you brushing long enough? I can't wait to ask my guest, Dr. Howard Ferran. He's a practicing dentist with more than 25 years of clinical experience, as well as a noted international speaker on faster, easier, more efficient dentistry. And his area of expertise 
covers many aspects of dentistry. Um, he is the founder and CEO of Veron Media, the parent company of Dental Town. He's developed several educational video series on the business of dentistry. Um, he's done professional journals, and he is a practicing dentist, and I am so excited to welcome him to the show. Good morning. Thank you so much for being on the show this morning. How are you? I'm doing good, Blythe, and congratulations on your show. I love it, and I love your website, and as a uh, father who raised uh, four boys and now has a granddaughter, I um, I always thought it was amazing when I had my first boy that I had nine years of college and zero training in raising a child. <laughs> and if it wasn't if it wasn't for books at Barnes and Nobles, I would have had to learn so many lessons the hard way. And I'm so glad that I, I treated my firstborn son Eric just like I would a root canal. And I went to Barnes and Noble <laughs> and I started reading all these books on babies and raising boys and they were so helpful and i look at that I, that that's my number one parenting advice that you know you have zero training to have a child and it's the most important job you'll ever have so treat it like your profession if you're a programmer think of how many hours you spent learning how to program why did you not spend that many hours reading about how to raise a baby human so congratulations on what you're doing Oh, thank you. That's a great parenting tip because none of none of us have instructions. And I took care of babies since I was 11 years old. And when I had my daughter, I was I was as nervous as any new parent. She had her days and nights mixed up, and I went out and I was reading Doctor Spock, and it was so funny because I thought I know what to do. I tell everybody else how to do things, and here it's my own child. So, you know what? They don't come with instructions and. That's great to treat them like you treat your business, but add some love to it. You know what? You're not the boss. Little love, a lot of love, a lot of hugging, kissing, cuddling. Anyway, we're going to break for commercial in just a few seconds, and I have lots of questions for you because we all have teeth, and hopefully we will all keep our teeth. So when we come back from the commercial, I'm going to ask you the number one question that I've gotten since I've been promoing the show. I've gotten a number of emails asking this one question, so I hope you can stay with us. Here comes I the can't music. Wait. We will be right back. We'll be right back with more help. My baby came without instructions. It's baby and toddler instructions with Bly Flipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. In today's business world, a helping hand or idea that doesn't come with an invoice is a treasured find. And if that happens to you, then you need to pay it forward to keep other entrepreneurs from making mistakes or getting a raw deal. It's called Paying It Forward with Josephine Girasi. Wednesday mornings at 10, 9 a.m. Central. Josephine is going to have the guests describe their accomplishments, the lessons they've learned, both good and bad, and then sharing those pieces of knowledge as we create a movement of Paying It Forward. For more information about Josephine, her business, and background, you can go to MyMomKnowsBest.com. Josephine Girasi has always been a problem solver. She saw this need and has turned it into a movement. It's Paying It Forward with tips, tools, and advice and hard lessons learned. These pieces of knowledge can make a huge difference for you, your business, and others. So join us for Paying It Forward with Josephine Girasi, Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., 9 a.m. Central on Doginet.com. It's the Fitness Minute with fitness expert, Annette Hammond. Golf is a good way to supplement your fitness program, but watch out for golf injuries. The most common occur in the low back, elbows, shoulders, hands, and wrists, and are defined as either cumulative from overuse or acute traumatic injuries. The impact and stress of the repetitive motion of the swing is sometimes hard on the muscles and joints. The Mayo Clinic says it's important to consider ways to reduce your risk of golf injuries. They recommend that you warm up first. Be sure to start slowly, work up to your desired level of play. Strengthen your muscles to protect your joints and reduce your risk of injury and build up your endurance. Focus on flexibility and keep your muscles pliable, strong, and flexible. For the Fitness Minute, I'm Annette Hammond. 
If you're a fan of Fitness Minute, like us on Facebook. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. The hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Blythe Lipman. Well, welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions. I'm here with my wonderful guest today, dentist and M. Yay, Dr. Howard Ferran, and we have so much to talk about this morning when it concerns teeth and your little ones. Um, but before I ask you the question that I keep getting the email on, can you tell my listeners a little bit about you? Because somebody said to me, what does that mean? What are those letters after your name? I've seen DDS, but I don't know the rest. Um, basically, I got out of dental school in uh, 1987, and I opened up my dental office and the first at the end of the first week, all the staff went and paid, and I thought it was interesting that I that I went to all those years of college and didn't even know how to do payroll. I didn't even know what Quicken was. I didn't know any anything like that. And and I noticed that all my friends who are dentists, physicians, lawyers, they all went to eight years of school, and not one person taught them anything about business. So I uh, went uh, enrolled at Arizona State University. They had an evening program for a master's in business administration. So I went there every Monday and Wednesday night from 6 to 10 to learn the business side. And I think it's interesting because when you talk about healthcare, the number one problem in healthcare is the, the crazy cost, and, and it's just so mismanaged. And it's because none of the physicians had one hour of business training. So I think if you're going to have a very successful hospital or dental office, or um, you're going to have to learn how to be very efficient with insurance and financing and trying to get your cost to low. You know, the only secret to lower prices is to have lower costs. So if a physician doesn't know how to lower uh, her cost structure, she's not going to be able to have lower prices or participate with insurance. So I thought that was a huge gap um, from dental school. So I have a DDS, which is a doctor of dental surgery uh, from the University of Missouri. And then I have an MBA, which is a master's in business administration from Arizona State University. Well, that's great. And you know what? Isn't that the name of the game, too, even with families, to be efficient and be organized and things work a little better? Anyway. Yeah, and, and they say they say one-third of divorces are over finance, and I think that's a big part. They don't have budgets. They don't have. They don't control their costs, and it's stressful. It breaks up one-third of marriages, and that affects toddlers in a big way when mom and dad are uh, arguing and fighting and getting divorced because they don't have a budget. They don't pay their bills on time. And uh, I, I imagine a lot of toddlers would have much happier lives if their mom and dad knew how to balance a checkbook and have a budget and lower their living expenses. Oh, yeah. Love does not conquer all, as we know, as we get a little older. But anyway, let me ask you, thank you for sharing that. Let me ask you the number one question that I've gotten a few times. Can you give your child dental disease from kissing them, from tasting their drink? Is it hereditary? I've had so many. I had this question so many times. Well, that is actually um, a very interesting part. I'm I'm 53 years old this week, and when Good I was uh, when I got out of uh, school, um, AIDS was the the big issue. And what AIDS uh, the the horrible calamity of AIDS one thing came out of it that was positive, and that is the entire planet knows that you can transmit diseases below the belt. Everyone from here to Asia to every, everyone knows that. But here we are at 2015 and the entire planet still is not even waking up to the awareness that children are not born with streptococcus mutans that causes the decay or P. gingivalis that causes gum disease or the human papillovirus that causes uh, most of the oral and pharyngeal cancer or herpes or any of this stuff, and you get this newborn baby and you hand it to grandma who's got an upper denture and gum disease and a partial and hasn't had her teeth cleaned in six years, and she kisses it right on the mouth, and that's where we get our disease. No, no child is born with AIDS or herpes or gonorrhea or syphilis below the belt, and they're not born with any of these bugs that causes oral disease. We, we transmit them. And when they do DNA studies of the, the strains in the baby's mouth, 95% of the time, the baby actually contained, uh, caught it uh, from the mother. Um, 
some other taste of food. And then um, when you when you blow on warm baby food, you're blowing about a hundred thousand streptococcus mutans right on that food, and then sticking it right in the baby's mouth. Um, you'll put you'll 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 make sure the bottle's working, so you'll suck on it, and then you'll stick it right in the baby's mouth. So yeah, it's a completely one hundred percent contagious disease uh, that we get. I mean, I, I thought your intro was amazing because you were talking about um, Massachusetts, where they're trying to teach children how to brush, and you're saying, is that really a clean environment? Well, they've studied every environment on Earth, and the most diverse. Uh, environment ever found is the human mouth. I mean, when you go into uh, the San Diego Zoo, there's about 4,000 species on display. But from your mouth, 30 feet down, all the way out the uh, back door of the anus, is about 12,000 species of bacteria, fungus, viruses. And yeah, so that's three San Diego zoos worth of, uh, of cultures. And you, you can't find that in a creek in the Amazon forest. You can't find that in a rhinoceros's nose. It's because the human mouth is probably, you know, it's warm. It's, it's 98.6 degrees. It's completely wet. It's a hundred percent humidity and nobody eats a richer, more diverse diet of proteins and sugars and carbohydrates than, than a human. So the mouth is absolutely uh, you, you could you could be negative and say it's the filthiest thing ever found, or you could just say it's the most diverse zoo on the planet, and it's three times greater than the San Diego Zoo. That's and amazing. I also, do, do you know if they passed that law? Because this was from a number of years ago. I couldn't find if they ever – they were trying to make it a law in Massachusetts to brush teeth in preschools. Well, I think that's interesting because most of the studies on what you do for your self-care, most of the research points back, you learn it from your mother. So if your mother uses deodorant, you do. If your mother flosses, you do. If your mother uses mouthwash, you do. So those little kids, you know, um, uh, most of the research shows that, that that little child standing there watching mom uh, groom herself in the morning, uh, and she has her routine, and that's usually where the children learn the routine. So I could see how a school – to try to break that cycle and say, okay, if this child's not watching mom uh, brush or floss, um, maybe if they, they, you know, we could model that behavior to them when they're young. I could see that. But back, um, but back to that, the, the contagious, I just want to say one thing, that the bugs that cause all the harm in the mouth for cavities and gum disease, they cannot live in oxygen. They're what we call anaerobic bacteria. So when that newborn baby is born, there's no place in its mouth for these bacteria to grow. So they would go in the mouth and you'd swallow them. The acid in the stomach would kill them. It's not until um, the first baby tooth starts erupting through, and now you have a flap of gum tissue leaning next to that tooth, and that's the only place in the mouth that there's no oxygen for these bugs to grow. And most parents, you hear them say things like, oh, I remember when – she was born, she had that beautiful baby breath, and then then after five or six months, all of a sudden it turned kind of a, uh, she lost that baby breath and it started smelling uh, uh, nasty. Well, that that's when the baby tooth came through, so now you have a flap of skin with no oxygen, and then when mother or dad or somebody's um, contaminating it with their own saliva, now that bug has a place to grow, and that's the anaerobic environment. And then back to the brushing and flossing, it's funny because everybody brushes their teeth where there's already air. Air is 20.9% oxygen, and that's, that's really not the main problem. The main problem is in between the teeth where there's no oxygen, and that's what the floss does. Floss carries air down in between the teeth. Air is 20.9% oxygen. It kills all the anaerobic bacteria. And dentists have been telling their patients their whole life that, if you had to pick between brushing and flossing, please just floss uh, every night before you go to bed. And then people come in and you say, well, how's your flossing? And they always say, well, not that good, but I, I'm a good brusher. And, and they'll, they'll even ask about toothpaste. And the research is even clear on toothpaste that it's not the toothpaste that's removing the plaque. The, the toothpaste just making your breath smell fresher and uh, maybe has some fluoride to pack some holes. But um, the main thing with brushing is that what you alluded to in the intro, that uh, to play a song is that, um, you know, if you just take a really soft bristled toothbrush bristle that's fresh, only 
you know, only three or four months old, so all the bristles are perfectly straight. And as long as you brush for two minutes, we call it dry brushing, you're going to remove the plaque. And what people do is they put on uh, toothpaste, and then they brush for about 30 seconds, and then their breast feels uh, fresher and brighter and whiter, and they feel it's kind of like putting perfume or deodorant on. Uh, but to actually get these bugs off, you have to mechanically brush with a soft bristle toothbrush for about two minutes. And what I think is um, um, good is to um, – you might want to do something else during your routine. Like maybe when you start brushing, instead of standing or looking at the mirror where you're just dying to get it over with, you could maybe um, walk around and lay out your socks or your underwear, or get out your shoes or – uh, go make uh, start your pot of coffee or what, whatever other behaviors you're doing. You can get squats. into a routine. It's a, it's a great time What's for that? exercise. You can do squats or you can run in place as long as you don't poke yourself with a toothbrush. <laughs> exactly. There are uh, I've seen YouTube videos of dental hygienists doing uh, squats and yoga poses while they're doing their uh, uh, their brushing. Because two minutes is really a long time if you're just standing there in front of the mirror. Well, the Happy and, and Birthday you, song, what do you think? It's good for kids if they can hum it. They can't sing and brush. Obviously, they can't. You know, they're too little. So what? which song do you like more, the ABC song or the, uh, what's the other one? Um, was it the Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star? Which one of those two songs do you like more, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star or the ABC song? Oh, the ABC song. They're actually both the same song written by Mozart. And That's if you right. To... I remember now. We're going to break for commercial in a few seconds. So I don't <laughs> want to get into anything else. But you know what? You're right. It's the same. You're right. That's really interesting. But I don't think it matters what you do. If you can get your kids to brush. And the thing that I don't understand very quickly before the commercial is when you do brush your teeth, you can tell if you run your tongue over your teeth after you brush. This is really gross, but I'm going to say it anyway. You can tell if they're still if they're not brushed right. You feel they feel gunky, and you know you need to really go in there and brush your teeth. People know when their teeth are clean and how they feel, and it's not just the front teeth; it's the back teeth. But on that lovely note about the gunk on your back teeth, we're going to have a commercial break. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with more help. For help, my baby came without instructions. It's Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. Is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Be here for Living Inspired with Trisha Goyer. Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Trisha will dig deep in the topics that matter most to women, inspiring women to make a change in their own lives and to make a difference in the world and maybe even deep within their own hearts. Trisha is a wife, mom, speaker, family expert, and author of 24 books. For more information on Trisha and Living Inspired, go to her website, trishagoyer.com. That's T-R-I-C-I-A-G-O-Y-E-R.com. Trisha's vision is to be the voice of hope and possibility for women of all ages. Her intention is to serve ordinary women by encouraging extraordinary things with God's help. Trisha expresses real life, real hope for real women. Is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Living inspired with Trisha Goyer. Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central on toginet.com. This is the Toginet Radio Network. Radio with a cutting edge. If you could live your life truly standing in a place of peace, joy, and abundance, wouldn't that make your heart soar? Now you can, with Lessons in Joyful Living, with your host, Kimberly Rinaldi, Mondays at noon central. Kimberly Rinaldi, having created a highly successful coaching practice, now teaches Lessons in Joyful Living. She believes in empowering others and that through it, you have the ability to break through any and all barriers, thus allowing you to reach your greatest potential and joyfully step into your life's purpose. What used to take weeks, months, or even years, she can now teach you in a matter of hours with her programs. For more on Kim and her show, go to her website, KimberlyRinaldi.com. That's R-I-N-A-L-D-I.com. Then join us for Lessons in Joyful Living with your host, Kimberly Rinaldi. 
Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. The hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Blythe Lipman. Well, welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions. Today is a live show, and I am talking to my wonderful guest, dentist Dr. Howard Ferran. And we were talking about the mouth and all the germs. And I was speaking to him during the break, and I was saying there's a couple things. I personally don't think you should be kissing your babies on the mouth. You never know if you're carrying a virus. You know, besides all the bugs that we just talked about, that's just my personal opinion. You know what? But everybody can do what works for them. However, there's one thing that drives me crazy, and I don't know how many have seen this, but many times I've been in the mall, and the baby's in the stroller, the toddler's in the stroller, and they have a pacifier, a binky, and they drop it on the floor of the mall, and mom picks it up and puts it in her mouth to clean it off, which isn't cleaning, and then gives it back to the baby. I mean, that's like so many germs from the floor, from the mouth, and it's like, oh, my gosh, I want to say go wash it off or, you know, have 10. I think if you if your baby takes the pacifier, you should have at least three with you when you go out in case you can't find a place to wash them off. What do you think, Dr. Howard? Well, I think that, um, you know, it's just a continuation that, that, that people, you know, the smallest thing your eye can see is 50 microns, and these bugs are five microns wide, so there has to be 10 of them side by side before you can even see a dot on the end of a pen. And people just have no they, – they just don't think because they can't see 12,000 different zoo animals living in, inside your body. When you look in the mirror, the average human is about a trillion cells, and inside the human is about 10 trillion um, other organisms that didn't come from uh, you or your mom or your dad and don't have your DNA. So when you look in the mirror, there's 10 other life forms inside you for everyone that's you. And you're, um, you know, I just read a study the other day that uh, women are so much better at washing their hands after they go to the bathroom. They say uh, 20% of women do not, but 40% of men do not. And so you're walking around society, touching everything and not washing your hands and then rubbing your eye, putting your finger in your mouth, uh, touching your baby's pacifier, uh, putting the bottle together. And we're just, uh, there's 7 billion people on earth and we're really um, spreading a lot of bacteria and bugs and fungi and organisms. And just in the mouth alone, every three months, they identify a brand new species uh, bacteria or fungi that, that was never even discovered before. So I, I always like to remind everybody that this is 2015, not 20,015. And I'm sure a thousand years from now or 10,000 years from now, they're going to, you know, they're going to know a million times more than what we know now about right. what's going on. But, but um, there's just a lot of unknown variables. You know, I just I have a quick question. It has nothing to do with gum disease. But I know in a lot of the ladies' rooms now they have hand sanitizers and to me, at the very least, if you don't wash your hands you can use a hand sanitizer. They have them in men's rooms. I obviously don't go into men's rooms. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see those very often. You usually see them in hospitals. And, and that, that's another thing I want to talk about, your babies and toddlers. Uh, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, in, in America, about 300,000 Americans die each year from a disease, a bug, a bacteria they caught in the hospital. What I think is bizarre is that grandpa's in the hospital sick and dying or has an emergency or whatever, and their children... Uh, want to show love and respect, so they, they they pick up their baby. So everybody in your town that's sick and dying, they put in one box called a hospital, and then you bring your baby there. And I mean, you just see all these cases where, well, why does this baby have MRSA? Oh, well, her mother, her grandmother got a hip transplant, and they went and visited her, and the baby got down on the floor, and the next thing you know, uh, she's got this infection. It's like. You know, if, if you're talking about washing your hands, the last thing you want to do is take your baby in a hospital just to visit someone. I mean, I even see this with dentists. A friend of mine had a heart attack and was in the hospital, and three or four of the dentist buddies were all calling up and saying, well, let's go visit him. And I, I said, well, we can FaceTime him. I mean, we love him. He knows we love us, but 
I don't think it's a smart idea for four dentists who have to run dental offices and have families and et cetera to go hang out inside of a box uh, where everybody's sneezing, coughing diseases. And right here, we're both in Arizona. It's amazing how if you go into the Intel plant where they make chips, those people go in there and take off all their clothes and put on all different clothes, and they breathe through different apparatuses. They have air filters that make sure the air has less than one part per billion because they don't want anything to contaminate a chip so that when you buy an Intel chip, it doesn't work. So they have six sigma. They have zero defects. They just won't tolerate it. But then you go to the hospital, and the doctor pulls up their car, gets out of the car, walks all the way across the parking lot, stepping on, you know, ant poop and bird poop and every rainwater and every bug known to man, and walks all the way up um, to the hospital and then just puts a little booty on over his tennis shoe. I mean, I mean, we're living at 2015 where we take infection control a thousand times more serious for our computers and iPhones then we do in our hospitals. Don't and even just, get me just... started. Nobody ever wipes off their phones. And you know what? The phone has so many germs on it, and it's so easy to take a wipe and wipe it off. But you're you're right, because the only time they keep the babies out of the hospital is during RSV season, which is usually around late December, January. And it's it's really interesting. I agree with you. There should be a rule. I mean, I, I also want to add to that. I work in an infant room, and if your children... If your child is in preschool and they and they use a pacifier, most infant rooms have a bottle warmer in there, which you do need to clean out at least once a week. If one of the kids drops their pacifier, I mean, we immediately put it in the bottle warmer. I do because you can sterilize it there. You know, these kids put everything in their mouth when they're in a preschool setting. And, you know, we have to be very careful about that, too. So... It's interesting because you're talking about hospitals. You know, it takes two seconds to wash your hands. And I know also in the infant room, you shouldn't have your shoes on. You should. We have we have the booties or a lot of parents, you know, just bring something to put on their feet that they only wear in that room. But it's scary with all these germs, with MRSA, with everything that's going around. Um, I, I did get another question. A mom asked she she had dentures by the time she was in her 30s and I guess her mother did too and she asked about heredity because she said her nine-year-old is starting to get receding gums and she you know she makes sure that that they take really good care of their teeth especially because of this is can it be hereditary even if you don't you know do something with the kissing and with the disease are they just born with it if the families had dental disease yeah, we, we don't see any hereditary link in losing all your teeth and getting dentures. In the United States, by age 64, about 10% of Americans have lost all their teeth, and about another 10% have lost about half. And then by wow. 74, it's about about 20% have lost all their teeth, another half uh, have lost uh, about half. But, no, it would be, um, you know, it, it, it's multifactorial. It has to do with, you know, catching the, 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 the bugs, um, P. gingivalis for gum disease. It has to do with, um, you know, your diet. It has to do, you know, remember there's only two animals that we see get cavities like humans. That's us and Winnie the Pooh because Winnie the Pooh eats honey and we eat sugar and <laughs> Bambi and Thumper never brush and floss and Bambi and Thumper never get a cavity. So it's, it's many, many, well, I don't want to oversimplify it, but there's many, many factors in um, this. But if you if you brush for two minutes every morning and you brush for two minutes at night and you floss before you go to bed, uh, you're going to have significantly less decay. I mean, it seems like every dentist and hygienist and dental assistant I know hasn't had a cavity in 20 or 30 years. So it's, it's very controllable. Um, you just have to understand uh, how it works. And it's easy. You know what? So if you're listening out there, it's, you should go visit your dentist if, if the little one's um... – gums are receding at nine years old, I think a trip to the dentist, they may be able to enlighten you. Maybe the toothbrush isn't right, which which leads me to ask, how often should you change your toothbrush? We talked about, you know, the toothpaste really not doing anything, but the toothbrush does it. How often should you change it? And why, why do they make different, you know, soft? Why do they make hard bristles, which are probably not good for your teeth either? 
Uh, I would I would say money is the answer. What's the question? <laughs> so if, if people, how often people, should if you people, change it? Should you change your toothbrush? Yeah. Well, for me as a dentist, I mean, I just look at a toothbrush, and if all the bristles are perfectly straight, you're you're fine. But when I go into other people's houses, it looks like they parked a car on their toothbrush bristles, <laughs> and they're just flattened out. So you know, you know, I'm sure a lot. You know, if you had a simple rule of thumb, you'd say uh, every three months. Uh, another rule of thumb is, you know, after you get done with a uh, a cold or flu or coronavirus, um, it's a good time to change out your toothbrush because the you know, the um, the bugs you can you can reinfect yourself with with your own bug. They're also finding that if toothbrushes are left on the counter within you know 20 feet of a toilet, that when you're flushing a toilet, you oh, always that. find fecal matter. Um, you find fecal matter, and um, the reason you know you don't like fecal matter for a a lot of reasons, but that's also where you find hepatitis D. Um, so, um, so yeah, I would just say um, it, it just seems intuitive that you'd want a really strong bristle to scrub that plaque off, but you're thinking of something really big you're scrubbing. But when you're trying to scrub a 5-micron bacteria off when your eye can only see 50 microns, you need a really small, perfectly straight, soft toothbrush just to go in there and mechanically wiggle it off uh, that tooth. And so it's just soft brushing, and um, and it's aiming the toothbrush bristles at a at a angle, about 45 degree angle. So you're um, sneaking underneath those gums for two or three millimeters, uh, because and remember it's under the gums where bugs can grow that will die if they're exposed to oxygen, and it's in between the teeth. So the brushing thinks more of the underneath the gum tissue. And then think as far as life forms, they're most likely going to be in between your teeth, uh, not sitting there out on, on the front tooth. Like, like as a dentist, you almost never see a cavity on someone's front tooth right on the outside surface because they're breathing 18 to 22 times a minute. And there's just so much oxygen, it could just never get going there. But on a back tooth or a wisdom tooth or in between the tooth, um, especially for someone who's a snacker, um, we, we, we see even, you know, we always talk about sugar not being good, but it doesn't seem to be an issue for someone who eats three meals a day when the average person's meal only takes them, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to eat. It's the people that every hour walk by the kitchen and throw another carbohydrate or sugar in their mouth. And these bacteria are just always being continually bathed and fed, uh, sugars because these bacteria, I hate to interrupt you, but we're we're breaking for a commercial, so I am not going to go eat a sugary snack. We'll be right back. Okay. Celery. (laughs) We'll be right back with more help. My baby came without instructions. It's baby and toddler instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. Is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Be here for Living Inspired with Trisha Goyer, Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central, on toginet.com. Trisha will dig deep into topics that matter most to women, inspiring women to make a change in their own lives and to make a difference in the world, and maybe even deep within their own hearts. Trisha is a wife, mom, speaker, family expert, and author of 24 books. For more information on Trisha and Living Inspired, go to her website, trishagoyer.com. That's T-R-I-C-I-A-G-O-Y-E-R dot com. Trisha's vision is to be the voice of hope and possibility for women of all ages. Her intention is to serve ordinary women by encouraging extraordinary things with God's help. Trisha expresses real life, real hope for real women. Is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Living Inspired with Trisha Goyer. Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central on toginet.com. It's the Fitness Minute with fitness expert, Annette Hammond. We all know how important it is to drink water throughout the day. It is especially crucial when the temperatures are high and it is oh so hot. Drinking water is also a significant element in weight loss. Why is that? Water, like food, takes up room in your stomach and it curbs your appetite. According to Eat This, Not That, a study was conducted by the American Chemical Society. They found that dieters who ate low-calorie foods who drank two cups of water, which is 16 ounces, lost nearly five more pounds in 12 weeks than dieters who did not consume that much water. Drinking water gives you a feeling of fullness. So when you eat, you eat less. Drinking eight glasses of water a day aids in weight loss and has innumerable benefits. For the Fitness Minute, I'm Annette Hammond. 
to hear other fitness and weight loss tips, visit our website at AnnetteHammond.com. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Bly Flipman on Toginet. The hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Bly Flipman. Well, welcome back. I can't believe we're up to the last part of the show. I'm talking to my wonderful guest, Dr. Howard Howard Ferran, and can you tell my listeners where they can find you? I know you're also a speaker, and you don't have to be in Arizona to have you come speak. You have such great tips. So where can my listening audience find you? Um, just have them go to my website, todaysdental.com, todaysdental.com. Um, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and um, they're, they, they can contact me there by email, howard at todaysdental.com, and uh, uh, leave a message on the website or call my number, whatever. Well, I will also put that on my site, mybestparentingadvice.com, and that will stay on there because I am sure you will get calls from this, especially you're a great speaker. I would love to have you come speak if I had an event going on. Anyway, we were Anytime. talking. Anytime. During the break, I was talking to you, you know, so many parents will put a little bit of door toothpaste on their child's toothbrush and give it to them while they're in the bathtub and say, let's brush your teeth. And I think they're really just eating the toothpaste. You know, at what age can they brush their teeth themselves? You know, I've heard when the first to- first tooth are up, you should, you should, you know, wipe it off every time they eat with a gauze pad. Tell my listeners what's right and what's wrong. Well, basically, I would, um, I would go, I, I would go in and see a dentist when the first tooth are up, because when there's no baby tooth, there's no place for those bugs to hide from oxygen grow. So it's not until the baby's tooth comes in. Uh, the baby's not going to have to floss until two baby teeth touch. So a lot of times the baby teeth are coming in and there's spaces between them all. So if there's air all the way around the tooth, there's no need to floss. And, um, and, and as when a baby can brush by himself, I would compare it to another behavior. Like when they're old enough, they can put on their tennis shoes and tie them and lace them and tie them up, then they would have the, the dexterity to, to brush and floss. So mom and dad uh, need to be uh, brushing their teeth until they can put on their tennis shoes and tie them up. And that's a, that's a really good tip. How about flossing? You know, they have so many little new ways to floss, and especially for kids, they put little cartoon characters, and then it's a little thing to hold. Do you think, do you think little four- and five-year-olds can floss? Do they really get down um, there, or do they need mom and dad to do that? I would again. I would. I would compare it to if they can put on their tennis shoes and and lace them up and tie them, they can floss. But another crutch about flossing, um, I would just say, is um, you know, again, you, you don't need a mirror. I mean, Stevie Wonder can floss just fine. You don't need to be standing there in front of a mirror. And I, I think um, it's very easy to do, and it shouldn't even take sixty seconds. And the main thing about flossing, the biggest mistake I see is when, you know, you want to do everything exactly the same way every time. So, you know, I have everybody start on the upper right and then go all the way around to the upper left and drop down on the lower left and come all the way back to right so you don't miss anything. A lot of children, they, they always start, they, they're looking in the mirror, so the only thing they see in the mirror is their front two teeth, so they start flossing in between their front two teeth, and so the mirror actually um, is throwing them off, and I, I, I think you can just... uh um, you know, you could just have the child looking at the mom or the dad and let's start on the upper right and let's go around the upper. Then let's drop down to the lower and come all the way back. And it doesn't take me 60 seconds and I don't need a mirror. And uh, so, the, you know, good habits are just doing the same thing over and over. That's what they do in sports. They just keep practicing the same drill over and over and over. And uh, a lot, lot of people can floss their teeth while they're walking around the house getting ready to do their next morning routine behavior and you know what if you do it with your child you both floss the same time they love to do what you do also when you put the floss in do you pull it down to take it out or do you pull it through um i i would you 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 put it between your teeth right and then you go down one side of the tooth and then you back it up a little bit and then go down the other side of the tooth then pull it out because again you're just trying to clean out underneath the gum tissue uh, so there's gum tissue on each of the two teeth that you're flossing. I'm telling you, a lot of people just pop this, the floss right through the teeth, 
And that's great. That's preventing a cavity. That's where the cavities grow in between the teeth, where the two teeth touch. But that's just for streptococcus mutans. You still got gum disease, P. gingivalis, so you need to go slip it down in between the gum tissue and the tooth on the back, and then the gum tissue and the tooth on the one in front of it, then right. pop it back out, and then go to the next tooth. It's like a V. If you, I always been told if you think of a V, you go on one side and the other side like a V, and you get it out. Okay, but anyway, enough about flossing. Let's talk about fluoride. Are we still giving our children fluoride, or do we just have it in the water? Well, basically, um, fluoride is a is a um, it's it's so misunderstood. Um, it, it's not a medicine. I mean, um, all fluoride was made from exploding, dying stars and supernovas, and it's the thirteenth most common element of the earth. It shows up in the ocean at one point four part per million. And when you try to build a brick house and you don't have any bricks, you're building a, a house with a lot of holes in it. And we need. And we're used to having um, our fluoride supply coming from water. And so we put that in the city waters at half the level found naturally occurring in the oceans, which covers 71% of the planet. And if those teeth are developing, starting when mom gets pregnant, all the way to the last tooth is developing, the wisdom teeth at about 18 to 21, if you're not having dietary fluoride, um, your tooth's going it, to – it's hard to build a, a house if you're missing – some of the key bricks, and uh, another way to get a source of dietary fluoride is anything that comes out of the ocean, because uh, that's mostly where the fluoride starts in the food chain is uh, is the ocean. And so um, when you're drinking uh, bottled water, uh, a reverse osmosis will take everything, will take the majority of all the fluoride out. A charcoal filter won't, but here in Arizona, um, Phoenix, Arizona has uh, community water fluoridation uh, for over 20 years. Uh, Tempe's had it since 1973. And if you buy bottled water, you can uh, tell the uh, bottled water company that they have uh, fluoridated bottled water, uh, which your child needs. Now, the toothpaste um, has a um, is about a thousand part per million. And the neat thing about the toothpaste is you're actually applying the fluoride to the tooth to help pass and remineralize. Um, areas that were getting demineralized from bacteria attacking the teeth. And when people use a fluoridated toothpaste or drink fluoridated water, their saliva has fluoride in it. And so, so then the saliva is bathing the teeth uh, 24 hours a day. So fluoride is a big component. Um, it's probably absolutely the most controversial thing in all of dentistry. About 25% of Amer- about one in four Americans believe uh, conspiracies that, you know, it comes from the mining association and it's toxic and it's all these things. It's medicine. It's mass medication. You know, you hear all kinds of um, bizarre stories, but it's, it's probably the most natural thing we do in dentistry. Well, that's really interesting because you know how much bottled water we all drink. And I always have thought about that with the little ones because, I mean, I can talk about Arizona. I, I too, I don't like the taste of our water. It tastes like chlorine to me, and I, and I have a reverse osmosis. So, what do you do? Do you add fluoride if you use an RO, which you know many people use here in Arizona and probably all over the place? Well, you know, for someone where their teeth are already grown, like uh, you and I, uh, fluoride toothpaste would be fine. Uh, for a child, if you are going to, uh, you know, a newborn baby till 21, if you're going to have reverse osmosis, you might want to think about uh, a, a charcoal filter system out of the out of the tap water, or if you're buying bottled water, just um, have it delivered um, with the fluoride in there at 0.7 part per million fluoride. Um, so that, that's how I would do that. Well, that's really interesting because I can remember years ago that. Um we had to put fluoride in the water years and years ago, and it was interesting that um, nowadays people don't think about that, and they don't know about that. So you should vin- visit the dentist when the first tooth erupts. Should you wipe the tooth off? Yeah, wiping the tooth off is good, but again, you're probably wiping off the surfaces that's already exposed to air, so the atmospheric oxygen would have killed you know, the, the anaerobic bacteria. Um, again, I, I would I would be more worried about brushing um, where the tooth meets the gum or two teeth touch 
and there's no air in between them getting a piece of floss in between there. And then again, but back to the dietary sugars, I mean, again, we have to keep reminding ourselves that Bambi and Thumper don't brush your floss. They've never had a cavity because they're not just consuming sugar all day they, long. Right. The of, they, they don't eat candy. Yeah. Uh, and I think the who does. I think the, the weakest link in the entire uh, health care system is always going to come back to nutrition. I mean, we just are what we eat. And um, even Thomas Edison picked up on that, that he said the, the doctors of the future will be concerned about diet. And uh, so, again, um, it just amazes me that last year in the United States um, was the first time that over 50% of all calories consumed in the United States were from drinking a liquid. Um, it just blows my mind that with the fastest, the three fastest growing diseases in America, dental decay, diabetes, and obesity, and we still have a government that subsidizes corn farmers to make high fructose corn syrup. I mean, that if that isn't the single largest absurdity in America, and what, what well, that you know what? Us, I have to interrupt you because we're coming to the end of the show, but I do want to end. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you know what? We are what we eat, and give your kids fruits and vegetables and brush and floss, and I am going to have Dr. Faram back on the show again. You are so interesting. I love your analogies. It's so easy to understand when you have little children. Thank you so much. I'm sorry we have to go. We could talk another hour about this, but you are coming back. And if you have a dog, give him an extra treat. It's National Dog Day. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. It was an honor and a privilege. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, wow, what a lot. A lot of interesting things I learned today. Next week, my guest will be Kristen Connor. We're going to be talking about a difficult but important subject, childhood cancer. It's so important. Parents need to know some of these facts. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google. I'm every place. You know what? And check out my website, mybestparentingadvice.com. I'd like to leave you today with a little dental humor. My dentist told me, I need a crown. And I was like, I know, right. I hope you get that over the air. Crack me up. Four out of five dentists agree. Lying through your teeth doesn't count as flossing. And finally, you don't have to brush all your teeth, just the ones you want to keep. So I'm so excited you could tune in today, and I'm very happy if you're listening to a podcast. You can always contact me via my website, mybestparentingadvice.com, and you can listen to all the other great shows. So I will see you next time. Have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye.